23rd January 2023. So there's something again which I saw, which, uh, <laughs> you know, which got me concerned, and it's again one of those prayer points that I'm having. Eh? Because I saw Israel planning, planning a war, but it was almost like it's planning to bomb somewhere. Then when I saw where its target was, it was on the Iranian nuclear arms eh? to actually destroy it. Now, I don't know why I felt scared about it. I felt a fear take over me as per that move. So when I zoned out of it, this is when I started to feel, you know, all that. But when it closes in and you begin to see that, intercede because something major can break out of, uh, you know, that move eh? with Israel. Eh? Three weeks and five days later, major international media outlets will lit ablaze with the news of an Israeli attack on Iran's military and nuclear facilities and a stunning fulfillment to the prophecy. Who did this? Iran has no doubt. An unnamed official in Tehran quoted by Al Jazeera claimed Israel was behind the drone strike that hit a weapons facility in the city of Isfahan, a known hub for Iran's missile industry. An explosion has shaken up Tehran. This happened 24 hours back. It looks like a minor blast, but it's not. It's a drone strike, a strike allegedly conducted by Israel. Israel has not taken responsibility, but multiple reports confirm that this was an Israeli drone attack, almost an act of war. The flare-up comes at a complicated time for Iran and for Israel. When it closes in and you begin to see that, intercede because something major can break out of, uh, you know, that move eh, with Israel. Eh? Ten months later, exactly as the prophet had prophesied, Israel was forced to declare war following an unprecedented, brutal and gruesome surprise terror attack by Hamas, an Iranian-backed terrorist group, the scale of which was likened to 9 9-11. It's the biggest attack that Israel has seen since the Yom Kippur War. By far, the, the, uh, the worst day in Israeli history. Never before have so many Israelis been killed by one single thing, let alone enemy activity on one day. And if you're Americans and want to compare this to something in American history, then this could be a 9-11 and a Pearl Harbor wrapped into one. It erupted just after dawn Saturday, air raid sirens sounding across Israel, heralding a massive barrage of Hamas rockets, more than 2,200. A complex and highly coordinated attack was underway, taking Israel completely by surprise, coming by air, by sea and by land. <laughs> Without warning, Hamas fighters unleashed on their enemies. Palestinian militants fired thousands of rockets from occupied Gaza into Israel. In Tel Aviv, people hurried to bomb shelters. Israeli cities smoldered on the Saturday of Simhat Torah, a holiday. Israeli security apparently caught off guard. Israel has what it claims are near impregnable borders but Hamas fighters prized them open in many locations, bursting through in large numbers. In a further sign this assault may have been planned for months, some arrived on paragliders. Many of these pictures came from Hamas itself, as it declared the start of Operation Al-Aqsa Flood. Here, an Israeli soldier is dragged out from a tank it is not clear if he's dead or alive. And Israel's retaliation has been brutal. Watch as Al Jazeera reporter Yumna Al Said reported live from Gaza. What can you report at this stage? All right. The prophet calls for intercession, warning that something big could break out following the drone attacks on Iran's missile facilities.
and subsequent media reports indicate that the war Israel declared on Hamas in retaliation for its brutal unprecedented attack was not only planned and supported by Iran, but also saw many nations threaten to join the conflict in a war that threatens to spread across countries and divide the world. Everybody understands that we're fighting for our lives here. This is no longer uh, an issue of a regional border uh, dispute with Hamas. Uh, and if anyone had the illusions that this is about borders or about occupation that doesn't exist in Gaza, we can remind our viewers Israel disengaged from Gaza back in 2005. Right. They should have no territorial claims for Israel other than their uh, radical Islamic um, uh, rhetoric of wanting to destroy Israel and kill the Jews. This is what it is. Hamas hasn't really ever needed a reason to attack Israel. Its rocket launches against Israel are almost a daily affair. But today, they took, they took all of it a step further by invading Israeli territory. And there's also another player in this puzzle of West Asian politics that is Iran. A country which backs and funds the Hamas as we just told you. In the aftermath of the attack on Israel, while almost all countries condemned it, guess who did not? Iran. An advisor to its supreme leader, Ali Khamenei, has said that Tehran supported this attack. He even went on to congratulate the fighters. He called them fighters. And this provocation also gives rise to speculation that Israel could attack Iran. There's a lot of reports doing the rounds. There's a lot of speculation as well. How far is Israel prepared, prepared to go? Will they just limit themselves to the Gaza Strip? Will they also take this attack to Iran? We are privileged to witness the caliber of prophetic grace in our generation through Prophet Elvis Mbonye that prospers and preserves both men and women and entire nations. And to this eternal benefit, we accord double honor to Prophet Elvis Mbonye.